Hello everybody and welcome to the last day on earth survival guide to go ahead and get you guys started on what to do in the mobile survival game known as last day on earth so we're going to be taking this off from the very top which is going to begin with the home base this is where you are initially going to spawn in over by some sort of a pickup truck now your home base is initially going to be inhabited by a bunch of zombies and enemies that you need to clear out so to get you prepared for this make sure that you check out that pickup truck nearby and loot yourself up a little bit not to mention maybe grab a couple of wooden planks lying on the ground go to that crafting menu and craft up a wooden spear or two if you want to use that as a weapon instead so the most effective way of clearing out these zombies is actually to sneak up on them using your ability in the bottom right hand corner to sneak. Now once you do a successful sneak attack with a melee weapon, you will actually be able to inflict three times damage for the cost of a single swing. So as you swing and attack, your weapon will also lose durability. So being able to save like this is a very powerful tool, not to mention that at times you'll be able to even like one hit a zombie before they even have a chance at attacking back at you. Now every time that you do clear a zombie or an enemy of some sort you are going to gain exp which is essential in leveling up now as you level up you're going to gain two important things you're going to gain crafting points which you can actually apply to learn new recipes in the crafting menu as you level up you will actually gain access to more powerful recipes as well and leveling up will also give you skills every time you level up you are granted a choice between three randomly chosen skills and there's also a full list of these skills that you could go through through by tapping on that little star with the circle around it in the top right hand corner of your inventory screen and that will give you a sneak peek into the variety of active skills which actually replace for example your sneaking skill in the bottom right hand corner and the auto skill in your bottom left hand corner that we are going to be going over in a little bit more depth in just a little bit and there are also passive skills as well that grant you different types of abilities and in some of the more rare cases very useful things such as the burglar skill which is essential in opening locked chests that you may come across and my personal favorite the extra pocket skill which allows you to actually have an extra pocket to hold some sort of a weapon food healing item etc that you could utilize at the tap of a finger but back into the base now that you have cleared it of enemies and potential actors that may try to harm you it's time that you start to gather and scavenge for resources this is where auto collect is going to be your friend so in that bottom left hand corner you should be seeing that skill once you tap auto collect your character is going to scavenge every Everything that he has the capability to within the map up until the point where there is nothing left in the map that he has the power to scavenge or your inventory becomes completely filled now you can also harvest those giant rocks that you are seeing and trees but you need to use the help of hatchets and pickaxes in such a case which can be crafted from your crafting menu with the help of a couple of wood and a couple of stone that you will likely have picked up from the ground already now you should notice some animals scattered throughout this zone as well and this is actually going to be your first opportunity opportunity to go hunting now this is where the crafted spear is actually going to be your best friend because combined with the power of sneaking up on these animals the crafted spear is able to do a total of 30 damage whereas animals such as the deer only have 25 health meaning that with a single sneak attack swing of the spear you should have a dead deer on your hand which you can then collect meat and hide from this just further highlights how useful the crafted spear is going to be in the early game due to how cheap it is and just in general combined with that sneak tactic how effective it will be especially since your main interactions are likely to be weaker zombies as you are within these early stages now then let's focus on building the main thing that you are going to be doing at your base so as you might see the base has come partially constructed or should i say partially destructed and you can actually go ahead and expand on that with wooden walls by going to your building menu and then you can even upgrade those walls to make them more powerful however you do need to have have them on an equally leveled floor so for example if you are trying to upgrade your wall to level two that wall needs to be on a level two floor first and foremost now wooden level one and two walls are vulnerable to being broken by the horde that is going to visit you and attack you daily however stone and steel walls once you are able to get up to that point are safe so just be careful if you're like trying to leave around any level one or for example if you've upgraded a wall up to level two and are getting prepared to upgrade it to level three the horde may very well go and poop on your parade now you can't stop this horde for a couple of days by killing the witch boss over the infected forest but you need to be careful this is not an early game task it is not an easy task to do and you need to be well prepared for what is to come 
Now, when it comes to walls, you don't really need to worry about them too much until you start raiding. Because once you start raiding, it puts you at risk of being revenge raided, which can lead to your chests being broken into and items being stolen. As a general show of how strong they are, level one walls can be broken by stone hatchets and stronger. Level two walls can be broken by iron hatchets and stronger. Level three walls can only be broken by C4 and level four walls can only be broken by the metal cutter, which at the time of this video is not yet available in game, rendering them effectively unbreakable. So it's going to be a good idea to have a decent amount of protection in your loot behind a solid amount of walls before you do begin such raiding shenanigans. Now, the raiders should first appear right around level 20 and give you quests for you to go and earn at your first raid, which can be completed throughout a variety of areas and in-game places. And if you do happen to be revenge raided and they do take enough worthwhile stuff from you, there's likely to leave footprints back towards their base where you can actually steal your stuff back and some of theirs on top of it. Now, there's more than just walls that you need to repair and build. You might actually notice a couple of existing structures that are going to be helpful for you to go ahead and repair, starting with the radio. So the radio will provide you the bunker alpha access code that you need to make your way into bunker alpha, which we'll go over a little bit later. Also information on what the trader might have at the trader event and what he'll be asking for if you do want to head over there. And it is what is going to grant you the ability to contact raiders as well. The chopper provides a vehicle that uses fuel to travel, provides extra storage, and is key in unlocking the north by bringing an electric generator on the back of the chopper up into the watchtower in the north to then power it up and unlock that entire northern section, which is where you can actually acquire more rare resources, such as harvesting oak in the oak zones of the north and copper in the winter zone. There's also a gunsmith bench, which allows for weapon modifications to be built and attached once the respective blueprint is found out in the world, which is then going to actually improve different aspects of those weapons. And that can range from how much damage they do, how likely they are to perform a critical hit, how much damage a critical hit does, how much recoil guns have, etc., etc. Now, you only need to build a mod once, and after that, it can be applied to all weapons from there on out of which that mod was built for. The police station location ends up being pretty good when it comes to finding gun blueprints and gun parts, particularly from the card chest, which actually, as you go throughout the police station, you will be able to collect police cards. You can trade them with the raider near the door, and as you get better cards, you can actually get better stuff from the conveyor belts and redeeming those at the terminal by those conveyor belts. Now, on the melee weapon mod side of things, the farm actually serves as a great place to find melee weapon blueprints, specifically from a farm box that you come across and bring towards a chainsaw at the end of the farm. However, this does prove to be a bit difficult and a lot of zombies swarm you, so definitely come prepared, but within that box should be a chance at finding modified melee weapons and modified melee weapon mods as well. Now, you can build additional structures at your base as well. You don't need to only just repair what it already comes with, and you're going to be able to build a variety of workbenches that are very valuable in refining all these different materials, such as the wood workbench, which can refine a variety of logs into their more refined plank versions, stone workbench for refining rocks into stone blocks, metal workbench for turning different types of metals into their plate versions, furnaces for smelting their raw ores into their respective bars, the refined melting furnace, which specifically can turn copper bars into steel, which is going to be very important. And there is a variety of other workbenches that you could explore, build, and utilize as well. Now, one thing of interest is actually the recycler, which is going to be something that I would recommend building as soon as possible, because what it actually allows you to do is break down whatever you put into it down into its raw components. The more you refine of a certain type of item, such as a weapon, such as an electronic, stuff like that, the higher level your recycler will become in that category, and the better chances you get at actually getting some of the materials from recycling it. The recycler is where a lot of otherwise useless components, specifically the electronic section, things like batteries, phones, etc., that have limited uses, can actually be broken down into very valuable components, such as electronic circuits. Batteries can be broken down into copper bars and a whole ton of useful stuff like that. Also, don't forget to build yourself a shower. If you ever start to get stinky, it's going to be very hard to sneak up on enemies. They'll be able to smell you from a mile away. So with the shower, you will actually be able to use water bottles to take a bath and remove any stink that you may have on your character. Now, once you have an empty bottle from using your water, you don't just want to throw it out. You can actually refill it within the rain catcher by putting those empty bottles in there. And over time, they will fill back up and you will have full water bottles to spare again. There's also a dog crate you can build that stores puppies that are found throughout the game. Particular locations of interest are the farm, airdrops, and the hunt 
hunter's camp a one-time event are all prime locations for finding puppies and bringing them back home once you feed them enough puppies can actually grow up into adult dogs you can crossbreed dogs to level them up and the higher level a dog is the more perks each dog has and these perks actually allow you to get a variety of boosts with the ultimate perk being the level four dog perk known as the true friend where your dog is actually a companion and will go along with you on adventures and finally the garage which actually allows you to have different chopper variants once it is unlocked so that covers a lot about the base but you're probably asking how are you going to get the resources for all of this and that comes in the form of the world map so once you leave your base by walking over the edge of your zone you'll be greeted with the world map where you will be able to travel to a variety of locations now some locations you should familiarize yourself with are the green yellow and red pine and limestone location now these colors do correspond to how difficult the zones get how hard the zombies are within and also the potential rewards that you can find within them so within each zone you should be greeted by zombies and wildlife that we've already talked about how to deal with along with some chests that you could loot up for resources and just in general be careful in these zones because dying here is very dangerous dying in one of these zones means you cannot recover your stuff because these zones are different every single time you go to them a stark contrast to the zones that we're otherwise about to talk about so the other types of zones are events such as the dealer airdrop oak clearing chopper event military convoy hunters camp and potential seasonal events if there are any cool seasonal events going on these tend to have a time limit above them for how long they are on the map the dealer is an npc you can visit where you can exchange certain goods that he wants for one of his crates now the contents of this crate do vary you can get anywhere from a lead pipe all the way up to something as good as a shotgun the airdrop is one of the more common events and this is just an airdrop towards the center of the zone and this airdrop can have a variety of good content within it highlighted by things such as powerful melee weapons pistols c4 and even engine parts the oak clearing is a little bit more rare but it is a great way of harvesting a good amount of oak without having to unlock the north otherwise oak can also be found in the red pine zones if you are lucky albeit in small quantities the chopper event does require a chopper in order to drive to but it often has some of the best loot that an event can ask for if you go over here you might need to dispatch some npcs that have guns in hand but if you take them out you are often walking out with valuable goods such as aluminum bars a variety of weapons and some pretty decent armor to top it all off with some gas you could steal from their choppers as well the military convoy is a little bit of a rare event where it is a crashed military convoy that you could loot up with the chance of finding the severed finger of a military soldier within its confines as well that finger can then be used to access a room with pretty good loot within the bunker alpha first floor as well the hunter's camp is a one-time event where you actually get your first taste of having a dog as a companion and it is rewarded with a variety of loot that you find throughout not to mention a couple of dogs if you help out the hunters whose camp that you stumble upon and then there are seasonal events which are going to vary with stuff like halloween events christmas events brazilian carnival events but now let's go over what is likely going to be one of your most favored loot locations out there bunker alpha you do need the bunker code to access it but once you have access to it there's going to be a variety of floors that you could go through and collect tickets those tickets can be redeemed within the first floor for green yellow and red ticket crates yellow and red ticket crates do have a chance at dropping the chopper fork and chopper gas tank along with chopper wheels and every single one of those crates do have a chance at dropping engine parts as well along with a variety of weapons and valuable loot and armor if you're lucky the red ticket crate might even have some c4 something that will very much so come in handy for any of your raiding endeavors you can also activate hard mode which makes every single floor reset set and become more significantly difficult until the next time that the bunker respawns now this is highlighted by a boss that unlocks on the third floor known as the blind one he's guaranteed to drop 10 red tickets along with three of each type of bunker hard mode item that you can collect and can be redeemed at the specialist in the overseer's office in that lobby if that is not yet open you do need to actually save the specialist first from the end of the second floor where he is locked in a cage for some reason once you turn in enough of these items you will be rewarded with a floppy disk which can actually be activated at a nearby terminal to unlock a special coordinate location where you will be greeted by some of the best loot in the game being highlighted by rare weapons such as the scar h grenade launcher precious metals and two guaranteed c4 amongst many other things and dope armors but again hard mode as it says 
is definitely harder. Now, there are also some other non-respawning locations, such as the motel, police station, gas station, and farm that all serve their own purpose. Now, we went over the uses of the police station and the farm, but the motel is another such location similar to those two that is actually a bit more on the beginner side and easier to clear out with a variety of loot scattered throughout. And there is also the gas station, where you can loot up a ton of cars, a gas station, and a nearby mechanic shop where Jane, the NPC, exists and is willing to give you special crates in exchange for a variety of items. And those special crates can actually help you unlock new chopper variants as well. But that, ladies and gentlemen, is a pretty overarching view of Last Day Honor Survival. Hopefully, I have set you on the right path and have given you a general idea of what areas are good for what and where you should be going and whatnot. But that's going to go ahead and wrap it up for me for now. Thank you guys a whole ton for watching. Huh, this was an awesome one. I'll talk to you next one. See ya.